Welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online webinar series. We uh, broadcast live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. And if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's okay. We do record the show every week and post that to our website. And I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can uh, access those recordings and see them. We, uh, we cover a variety of things here on Encompass Live. We uh, serve all libraries in the state, the Nebraska Library Commission, as you guys know. And so we have topics for schools, academic, public, um, correctional facilities, uh, all across the board. And we do a mixture of things here on the show, book reviews, interviews, demos of services and products, mini training sessions, just anything that we think may be of use to uh, or of interest to libraries out there. Uh, we do have no, uh, Nebraska Library Commission staff that do presentations for us for things that are uh, Nebraska or commission related. Um, and we bring in guest speakers sometimes. And today, well, I guess it's kind of a mixture, I would say. Uh, today's topic is the 2018 Public Library Accreditation Process. This is for public libraries here in Nebraska. Uh, in addition to being the host of Encompass Live, I am also the Director of Library Development here at the Nebraska Library Commission, and that puts me in charge of the accreditation program. Uh, joining me this morning on the line is two of our regional library system directors to help uh, chime in with any uh, comments or uh, advice or anything they want to say throughout the show. So remotely joining us, we have Scott Childers, who is our um, Southeast Library System uh, Director. Hi, Scott. Hello. And Denise Harders is here as well, who is from our Central Plains Library System. Good morning. Good morning, Denise. Um, we do have two other regional systems. There's four of them in the state, uh, Three Rivers up in the northeast section of the state, and then Western out, well, west. Um, those directors are not available to join us this morning for various reasons, but that's okay. <laughs> we got um, the library system directors are, uh, they do participate and help out with this library accreditation process, public library accreditation process a lot. So they are a good resource and that's what we have on the line with us this morning. So today, this morning, we're gonna take some time to talk about the upcoming public library accreditation process. Uh, public library accreditation is an annual process here at the, through the Nebraska Library Commission for obviously our public libraries in the state. It is a program where we uh, have give them the resources to be accredited and to you know show that they're doing you know reaching certain milestones and reaching certain benchmarks at their libraries. I, uh, for today's show, we're going to be using the website, our Nebraska Library Commission website, to go through the accreditation pages and all the information we have on there. There's not an actual presentation or slides that goes along with today's shows, show, so we're just going to be doing things off of there. So uh, on our website here, we have, uh, this is the Library Commission's homepage, nlc.nebraska.gov. And on our pages, we have these flyout menus here where you can access all sorts of different information about the Library Commission. And the second one right here off the top is for accreditation and certification. They are grouped together because they are all related. I'm going to just bump down here to our library accreditation section to start with, but we'll be looking at a lot of these different things here this morning. So public library accreditation, why would you you know, what is accreditation and why would you even want to be accredited? Um, as you can see here on the page, we do talk about that it does establish minimum standards for library service in the state. Libraries can compare themselves to uh, your standards that we set or other libraries out there. Um, they, you can use this information to help uh, promote to your stakeholders that we've reached this level of accreditation. We've actually been, you know, analyze, I'm not sure if that's the right word, but we have looked at what we do at our library and shown that we are meeting certain things related compared to other libraries of, uh, that are related, uh, similar to us. There are also some things that you can get. Uh, why would you, you know, the advantages of being accredited here in the state? Uh, in Nebraska, if you are accredited, you're eligible for state aid to public libraries. So we're talking money. 
there's a formula each year that's done and if you do uh, apply for and are accredited for uh, each year for, for, for a year uh, for a particular year you can receive state aid monies from us and that money amount will vary each year we, you are also eligible to apply for grants that we offer through the Nebraska Library Commission. We do have a grants page here as well, some grant information. Uh, we offer certain grants through the commission, uh, continuing education grants, library improvement grants, youth, youth grants for excellence, all of those you do need to be accredited by us to apply for and receive those grants, so money again. Also, there are outside of the Library Commission, some organizations have started working towards, uh, also use these accreditation uh, standards to as one of their criteria. Uh, here in Nebraska, the Kreutz Bennett Donor Advised Grants. This is a grant program through the Nebraska Community Foundation, and these are specifically grants for libraries in order to apply for those grants, which can uh, you also do need to be accredited. Uh, those are monies you can get to do construction in your buildings, uh, provide programs, monies you might need to do different programs. Those are for very small libraries. Your population served needs to be 3,000 or less, so the Kreutz Bennett Grants. Also, there are grants through the Department of Education, or, or the, the Community Development Block Grants through the Department of Agriculture, sorry, wrong one, and USDA Community Facilities Grants. There's a couple other ones that also, they have decided to use our accreditation standards as uh, reasons for that as well. So there's a lot of different things you can apply for if you do get your accreditation through the Library Commission. There is um, some work that does have to go into being accredited. It is a ongoing process of keeping up with what you're doing throughout the year. It is, however, a three-year a three -year process. Every three years, you are up for reaccreditation. So you, you, uh, this, you know, this year, everyone who's up now, the last time you guys did it was three years ago <coughs> for most libraries and you are notified that you are up for accreditation when it, when it um, comes to this time of year. The process starts July 1st. On at July 1st, which is this Sunday coming up, is when the uh, application form, which I'm gonna show you, will go live. So you'll be able to access that on July 1st. I will send out an email to all libraries who are up for reaccreditation this year. There are 58, right down here, Yes, 58 uh, libraries who are up for reaccreditation this year. In addition, for libraries who've never applied before or their accreditation has lapsed, they are also invited to join um, in as well. And they are sent an email as well saying, hey, you are also invited. In order to be invited, if you have not done accreditation, you do need to have completed uh, the public library survey. And it mentions that right here for the preceding year, as well as a supplemental survey that the Library Commission has for extra questions. So there's an annual public library survey that libraries submit to us here at the Library Commission. And if you have done that, then you are eligible to be invited to apply to be accredited if you have never been, uh, been accredited before. So the, there's an application form online that you submit, and then and that opens on July 1st, as I said. It's due by October 1st. So we have a few months where you can work on this form, work on whatever information you need. Once I have all the application forms, I then will look through them and evaluate them. And by the end of the year, December 31st, you would have an answer back of if you're, at the very latest, if you're accredited or not. There are actually two items that you need to submit to be accredited. First one is the application form. There is also a community needs response plan. This is was previously called the strategic plan. We renamed it last year as we were going through the training to better uh, describe exactly what it is. It is a plan at about, about libraries where you are looking into your community to, to see what's going on in there and then using that information to plan your upcoming programs, services, what you're going to be doing over the next few years. So um, on by October 1st, you need to have submitted the application form online that I'm going to take you through a demo of here today and this strategic community needs response plan that you submit to me as an actual you know, document. Um, either email it to me, fax it, mail it, whichever works for you. We'll go through some of the information about that as well. 
in addition to having submitted the public library survey and doing that community needs response plan, there are some minimum qualifications you have to meet to be accredited. And we have those qualifications right here. There's a link here to, and I'm gonna open up a new tab to do that over here, of what basically you need to have before you can even start the process, even if you have done your survey and you, uh, have done a plan. These are some of the basic things that all libraries need to have if they even want to get into the accreditation process. First thing here is being legally established um, via state statutes. We have state statutes that uh, describe that, uh, explain what it means to be a legally established library in the state. Uh, comply with all library laws in Nebraska, um, rules and anything local, if there are any local laws that have been uh, put together at your library or in your town or in your community related to how the library runs, you have to comply with those. You do need to have a board, a library board, either administrative governing type board or advisory, either one, that follows also Nebraska's laws. There's There are specific laws related to running of Nebraska public libraries. Uh, in addition to that, following of the open meetings law, we have information about that as well. The other things that I had mentioned earlier that had to do with this that is on our website, board being certified by the Library Commission and director being certified by the Library Commission. And I'll explain those in a second too, both your library board and your director. You receive local funding from a city, village, township, county, any of those, wherever your funding comes from. As I mentioned earlier, you have submitted both the main public library survey and the supplemental survey that we Provide, uh, asked for here at the Library Commission. You have staff present during all scheduled hours the library is open, um, paid staff being, being running the library. Now, a little caveat to this, this, there are times when you can't, don't have staff available. If all of your people are going to a meeting or attending a, a session or attending conference here at you know the Nebraska Library Association conference or something, you can have volunteers that come in on the fly to do things like that. But as far as like a regular schedule, you do need to have paid staff for most of, you know, as a regularly scheduled people. Um, the director has an email address which is used and checked because that is how we will contact you. I will be emailing you about your accreditation. Uh, you don't charge anyone for your basic services that you provide. Uh, circulating your materials, using your computers, using the internet, using any items that you have, any you know, your research services, all of those things you cannot charge for your basic services. Now, sometimes you will have services that are like we're doing a special program and you have to pay a fee for the materials to, you know, the basket weaving program and you need to pay for the, the materials for that. That's okay, but this is talking about the basic, typical services that libraries offer. Um, don't charge for access to the internet as well. And you do an any report that is submitted locally and um, that we can take a look up if we want to. So these are the 12 basic criteria that you have to have in order to apply as well. So those are some of the basic, the, 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 you know, the, the, the heart of the accreditation program there. There are three different levels of accreditation. This was something new, we had a new version of accreditation, it started up in 2013. Uh, gold, silver, and bronze is our three levels, and gold is the highest level, 250, um, and of course silver and bronze. And this was done during, the original one was done, I believe it was potentially either during an Olympics time was going on when they were working on this, and so it was actually, if I if I heard the story correctly, it was put out as kind of a a joke. <laughs> I suppose it's like we're you know what would we call the levels, and it's stuck, and and we like it bronze, silver, and gold. It does make sense. It's it's a good um, you know fun way to have the levels. I think the accreditation levels are based on a point system. This is for different things that you do at your library. You can earn points towards them. And the more points you have, the higher level that you will be at. Um, bronze is 175 points, silver 200, and gold 250. And now this is a system that was, as I said, they, we did some changes to the guidelines that were done in, 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 and were enacted in 2013. 
And before that, the way the program worked, you had to, it was an all or nothing type program where you had to meet all of these criteria to get the lowest level of, of accreditation. And then uh, here's the next batch of things of everything you have to do to read the next level and then the next batch to do the next one. That wasn't as, as good a system as it could be. So they came up with this new idea of doing that having points assigned to each thing that a library could do. Lots of libraries do different their services, do different things and are strong and more stronger in one area than in another area. And we wanted the accreditation program to lend itself to that. So some libraries might not be doing so well here, so they don't earn these points, but they can make it up over here in this other area. It makes it much more um, flexible, much more uh, based on what libraries um, are individually doing in each of their locations because they have different priorities different things that their community wants compared to the one down the road and you just can't do across the board that everybody gets evaluated and and uh, looked at in the same exact same way so it's a much more flexible system and it helps a lot more libraries to become accredited or to become accredited at uh, higher levels I think and a lot of the information in here is also Community, very community based. Our community needs response plan that I'll talk about, and some of these uh, the different questions that you answer in the application form are also about what you're doing out there in your community. All right, so that's some of the basics of what accreditation is. What I'm going to talk about now before I go into the form, and actually, Scott or Denise, do you have anything to add? We're going to go into the certifications next. I don't have anything to add at this okay. point. All right. So we did mention in the 12 minimum qualifications that, that there was two other certifications that are that feed into accreditation. And that's why these three things here are together in this flyout menu on our website. In order for your library to be accredited, both your board and your li public library, your library director have to be certified. Uh, and for the board, we'll talk about that one here at the top here. We have a lot of information here on how your board, what needs to be done, um, what they need to do to be certified and resources that they can use. There is a library board manual, which is a really great online guide about being a board that we recommend here. There is, you can look up your library's board status and um, application form here, but go to the basics here. Library boards, both for library boards and for pub library directors has to do with doing continuing education, uh, earning continuing education credits towards your certification. This is attending workshops, watching webinars, attending webinars, um, uh, going to, um, conference, things like that. For public library boards, your board as a whole has to earn 20 hours of continuing edu education credits in a three-year period. Uh, all of these things go in a three-year period, which is nice. The public library board certification, the director certification, and the uh, library, the library accreditation. Now, these three-year periods, however, I'll warn you, may not match up to be expiring at the same time. It depends on when you first signed, got your board started doing uh, their certification. When your library director may have first started their certification process may not be the same time as when your library's accreditation process goes. So you're going to have to follow the dates for all of these to make sure that they, you, you know, when each one is expiring. As long as your board and your director is currently certified at the time that your accreditation comes due you're all good you you know it doesn't have to be all the dates don't have to all line up so if your director's certification doesn't expire till expires in 2019 but your library is due for reaccreditation this year in 2018 that's fine you don't have to have your all of your credits done the same thing with your board if your board's certification is due up for renewal in 2019 but your library is due in 2018 and you've only done 10 of your hours so far that's okay 10 of the 20 you're supposed to have that's okay because you're still working towards this three-year period of your uh, board's certification uh the 20 hours for the board and this is something that i think some of the boards are not aware of or haven't caught on to it's 20 hours in total collectively which means the whole board has to uh, do 20 hours not each person 
So if you have five people on your library board and all five of you sit and watch a one hour webinar, like today's, for example, about accreditation, that is um, five hours of CE credit that you've earned for sitting together, all five people and at once watching this webinar. So not too hard to reach your 20 hours in a three year period, I always think, as a library board. We also have a lot of resources here. You can check on your board status. There is a website here where you can see if um, the board is currently certified, when the expiration date is, uh, what library system they're part of, and if you click on the actual library's name, you'll get the specific um, information about that board. So here for Ainsworth, which yeah, they are actually up for accreditation this year, um, theirs is here showing what their library board has done, that they are currently accredited because they don't their recertifications not due until September of this year. So they've got seven done. They've got until September to get their 13 more. And then they will be good to go for their uh, feeding this, having this feed into their library accreditation. We have a lot of resources here. Oh, there's also a form here to submit continuing education activity to us here at the Library Commission. There's a form where you can put in the activity and the number of hours, all in one form here, you can put in something that they've attended and then list all of the different members that have attended that thing and how many hours it is for that particular um, program, webinar, whatever it is that they attended. So we have a form here. Yes, I do want to leave. Uh, when you attend something like this that we at the Library Commission are presenting ourselves, we actually track the attendance for you. So I will be submitting that you attended this. But when it's something that we don't run, you need to make sure you submit it. Also, you can check your board status here and see if we've received something new about it that you've done. And if it's not on there, send us a form. We have lots of resources here about ways that boards can earn their continuing education credits. Um, as I said here, attending conferences, lectures, workshops, webinars, whether in person or recorded, all of these different ways that you can do it. We have specific coursework here that we've, we've paid for for the state of Nebraska for all libraries to have access to the United for Libraries, American Library Association's United for Libraries Trustee Academy courses. These are specifically webinars and online resources for library boards. So there's a lot of different courses here, information about being a board, working with a library director, standing up for like intellectual freedom, all of these different things you can take. And there's a lot of these little short ones too that you can watch. All of these are things that you can do to earn a continuing education credits to go towards your board's certification. Krista? Yes. This is Denise. Hi. And um, library boards can request that their system directors come and address a particular topic. Like yes, I went and talked about um, the Open Meetings Act at a library board meeting mm -hmm. and that um, was continuing education for all those board members. Exactly. Yes, something that, and that's a great idea to have. So, if, you're, if there is something that you know, there is these online things that a lot of people do, but some people pref learn better their style of learning as uh, in person. And yeah, do if there's something you're like, if they're concerned about or didn't know how they how uh, that per thing that particular thing ran, like Open Meetings Act, or if you have new members on your board, that would be a good time to have one of the library, the system directors, Denise or Scott. Um, Eric Jones is our system director for the uh, Three Rivers Library System. Any of them coming in to help you, you know, get new people on 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 board, up to speed. <laughs> Say that with their uh, being on a library board. Krista, this is Scott, and one thing that has sort of recently changed with board certification is, uh, and this is with some new understanding of, of, of things, uh, long-term board members who may have been part of the school system or something used to also try to claim some of the training they did at school services as board education. Mm -hmm. And recently, um, it looks like that has not been always accepted. It kind of depends heavily on the topic. So, um, true, exactly. Yeah, what it does need to do is, and some things may carry over from schools to, to public libraries. That's true, some topics, but it does have to be something that would. Uh, 
be related to or help you do your job as a public library board member. So if you attend, just because attending a class doesn't necessarily mean it counts towards this because if it has nothing to do with being a public library board member, it's not gonna feed into your certification here, correct? Uh, but if you're not sure if it's something on the, you know, you submit it to us and um, Holly Duggan, our continuing education coordinator and Linda Babcock, our administrative assistant for our department, will look at what you submit and decide if it is something that does meet the criteria or not. Uh, but the whole point of it is to be, for this, to continue education you're doing for this purpose is to become a better, doing better at your job of being a public library board member. Uh, there's lots of other CE, continuing education training that you might be doing, uh, but if it doesn't have anything to do with being a public library board, then it's not going to be accepted for this, correct? The other certification that you also need to have is your public library, your library director also needs to be certified. Uh, this, there's a little more to this as being certified as the director. The director has to have 45 hours of continuing education credit, also over a three-year period, though. So they do have, and of course, this makes sense, they need to have more education. Uh, you do need to submit an application to, part, to be participating in the certification program, too. We do not just track everything all of our librarians do and assume that it's going towards this. Not all public librarians are, are interested in being certified or wanting to, and that's fine. Uh, so you do have to actually submit an application to be participating in the public librarian certification program first and once you do that then from that point on we will be tracking your continuing education and what you do there are different levels of certification for library directors and this is related to whether you um, have received education already or if you have not and you're going to be using our um, coursework here to get your certifications. So if you have either a degree in library science or any kind of degree, you can, that can also be used as part of your certification. If you have just received a degree in library science areas in any way, you can see here that you just let us know that you've done that and you will be certified at that level to start with and then you just have to continually do continuing education credits. If you have not gotten a degree in library science, if you have no degree or if you have something, a degree in some other area, then you would need to take, as you can see here, our basic skills courses. This is a set of courses that are about the basics obviously from the name of being a library director running a library and you would take those over the three-year period to get all of your credits towards uh, being certified. Um, so you can see here we've got a lot of information on our page about that that you can look into. Uh, if you do have a degree you get your certificate you're good and then for you do still have to do more continuing education credits to renew your certificate even if you have a degree you still have to do more education keep up with things take workshops take training you can take the basic skills classes you can attend workshops webinars conferences all the different things that you might um, want to do um, if you don't then you do have to do the basic skills requirement if you don't already have a degree in something in library science then you'd have to do a the basic skills and take all the basic skills or courses that are required there's some basic ones and elective ones and you can look at all those courses there we run them throughout the whole year so in a three-year period you can you should be able to attend all of the different works all the different basic skills courses that are required to keep up that just like I said with the boards, if you are working towards your certification and haven't completed it, that still counts towards the library's accreditation. So don't worry if you've got a brand new library director and they just submitted the application to start participating in the, in the program to be certified and then your accreditation comes up but they haven't finished it, that's okay. You're in the program and you're working towards your cert your certification that will count. We will keep an eye on it though and make sure that your director does continue taking courses and working towards completing that certification. If they do not, we will notice and then that would be a reason why you could have your library's accreditation removed if they didn't complete doing that. Same thing with the board. So we do track all of this to keep track of it. 
there's a lot of stuff I can talk about at library certification, but you've got all the information on here. You've got links to what kind of things you can earn um, credits for. Uh, there is a CE record review where you can log in and check your personal records. Uh, this would be something you'd have to log in with them, so I don't have one I can show you here. But you can check yourself online and see what you have, what has been submitted for you. Well, how many credits you have, how many credits you need. Uh, you can log in right here to, to see that yourself and keep track of how you're doing as a library director. Now, this is as far as accreditation for your library is concerned, the director has to be certified, but additional staff on your at your library can also participate in the public library certification program as well. And if they complete it, they can you can earn more points towards your accreditation by having more staff that do that are also certified as well. So uh, that's optional for them if they want to. It's a great program to keep up on things, especially going through the basic skills classes about the, the basics of how to run a library. Uh, all right, Scott or Nice, anything else you want to add about the certifications? Uh, I don't have anything else. Okay. Um, nope, yes, yeah, so, I'm good. All right, so just important things are make sure you keep your board up to, up to speed on doing their CE. That is something that we've discovered is sometimes a struggle for some libraries is their board doing those things. But you've got a lot of resources here. And for the librarians, make sure you actually sign up for the program, submit the application saying you want to participate in it, and then start keeping up on your credits there. We do, as I said, keep track of this. Uh, as I said, Linda Babcock, she will she will reach out to you, our administrative assistant, and if, if we know you're coming up to a renewal deadline we'll reach out to you and remind you that did you know your your accreditation your certification is coming due you're going to expire in like the one that we looked at was in September for that board and you need this many credits so please just letting you know that this is something you need you might want to be working towards so we do keep an eye on that and try and nudge you to make sure you don't fall behind so those are two kind of outside of the accreditation program things that feed into it and then you've got all those reports submitted, you meet those 12 minimum requirements, and then you have your community needs response plan. I'm gonna look at that briefly here first to show you what that's all about. Now, all of our libraries that are currently in the accreditation program and are being re-accredited this year would have done one of these when it was previously called the strategic plan the last time that they participated, they had to do their accreditation three years ago. So anyone who has done, who is being re-accredited in 2018, you should have a copy of your previous plan. It would be called a strategic plan, because that's what it used to be called. And you can use that to build on to, to create your new updated community needs response plan. The name of the plan has changed. Not a lot of the, none of the actual content of the plan has changed. We've just changed it because there was a lot of confusion over calling it a strategic plan. Uh, strategic plans are something that organizations or municipalities or cities or libraries may have, and that's great. The strategic plan that was uh, created for this purpose for accreditation is not, as we went through it and we're using it over the years, realize it's not really a your traditional strategic plan as you think of it. And Scott actually came up with the idea of it's actually about community needs, community needs assessment and response. And that's what we're really focusing on on this plan, not your like a five year strategic plan of everything the library will do. It's just looking at your community. So we can't we decided that he came up with this new new moniker for it. Community needs response plan. And it really does explain much better exactly what we're looking for. We want you to look at your community, see what's going on out there, and find some things that the library can do to respond to that. This may be something completely separate from if your city or your library does have a strategic plan that they work from for all library uh, you know, or uh, processes, uh, but this is just something specific that we have for accreditation purposes. And like I said, you should have a previous one that you can base on um, your new one on. If you're not sure where that is, previous director didn't keep track of it, misplaced it, you're not sure where yours is, we have copies of them all here and I can get you a copy of yours, so just let me know if you need that. Then we're gonna go just quickly through some of these about what you do need to do having a computer needs response plan. Um, 
And we have a lot of resources on our page about this uh, mission statement, a community profile. We look at the demographics of your community, looking at your community's needs, uh, what is going on in the community that's doing like uh, focus groups and web and surveys and things. And then uh, analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Your the the uh, depending on your point of view, love it or hate it, SWOT analysis, <laughs> uh, strengths and weaknesses of the library, and opportunities and threats outside the library. Um, then you would analyze these things, come up with some goals based on this information you've created, you've collected, and uh, submit that plan of what you're going to do to um, to me. I did do we did do training earlier this year in person and online about accreditation and more digging deeper into community needs response plans. And there's a recording of that on our website that you can look at along with slides and workshop materials. So take a look at that to learn more about it. We have examples here of other libraries plans. Some of these are older ones, some are the new ones that they submitted that were actually now the new community needs response plans. So you can take a look at these and see some examples. These plans can range from five pages long to 30 pages as long as there's not a set format so you're going to do whatever works for you and then we have these worksheets and how-to guides and help guides that you can help you figure out what you need to do for each of these sections uh, planning looking at your community profile running surveys uh, so use all these resources all of these worksheets to put together your plan this is something that you would submit to me along with the application that we're going to look at in a second here and I will then evaluate it and look at it and let you know if anything needs to be changed needs to be changed on it. This is also something that you really really depend can depend on your system directors Denise, Scott, Eric uh, to help you write these as well. If you have a draft version of this and you want one of them to look at it for you that's great have them do it. If you need them to come and help you know come meet with you as Denise said about other things they can come and meet with you and talk to you and your board and whoever is your team you've put together for this to help you uh, put together your updated plan. Um, do you guys have any other tips or idea uh, things to say about those? Early is better than later. <laughs> yes, it does take some work, definitely. <laughs> So some of you, I know some people have already started on this. I've actually already received uh, a couple of plans before even accreditation officially opens up, which is, as I said, on Sunday. So that's great. I've got some plans to look at. Um, and there is a back and forth of this. So you submit a draft or a updated version of your previous one and you're not sure uh, if it's perfect, it doesn't have to be perfect, that's fine. I will look at it and give you feedback and then you can resubmit it or just update the sections you need to, work with Scott or Denise on certain things and that's fine. There's always a back and forth until we come up with whatever the, whatever the final version is. Do you wanna say something, Scott? Yeah, I, I was gonna say, um, be careful um, not to just throw stuff in just to pad the page count. Um, you don't need a certain amount of pages in your plan and get these these things and you don't need to put in extras don't put that extra work on yourself uh, yeah. i've seen a lot of a few plans that just throw in a bunch of random stuff from like the chamber of commerce that didn't need to be in a plan and actually made the plan harder to follow and, and figure out what you were trying to say yeah yeah i can see that and that's the thing think yeah like we were, I was saying, there is strategic plans or planning that your community might be doing. This may be something different and that's okay. And this is not gonna be a plan of everything the library is doing. It's just gonna be, here's some things uh, related to looking at our community. And as you look through some of the resources we have here, you'll get that idea. We've got a lot of guides. And like I said, that recording is definitely good, really helpful for people as well. Uh, some of you may have already attended when we did do the actual in-person workshops earlier this year, which is great. This recording here will help you out as well. It's about a two hour ish uh, recording that you can watch in bits and pieces if you need to. And then the workshop materials can help a lot with that. So I strongly recommend taking a look at those. So, all right, we've talked about the basics of it, why you do it, how it works, community prompts, response planning. So now the other thing in addition to the plan is the actual application form and the uh, accreditation application itself. And this is where you tell us 
specific things about your library. The reason that we have you a requirement is that you've actually done the public library survey and the supplemental survey is some of those questions automatically feed into your application form to give us some of the statistics we need to know about your library. You're already reporting these things to us in the survey, so we don't want to make you have to report them again on this application form. So our computer team here, Vern Bias, our head computer person here, and Sam Shaw, who's our data coordinator here at the Library Commission, who you, if you may recognize, he's the, your public library survey guy. They put together and make sure that all of these statistics automatically feed into your application form for accreditation first to start you off with. Here's all the basics you've already told us, but there's other things you do do at your library that we want to know about as well. So we've got those extra questions that you would then have to answer. Now the uh, application itself it's, is organized into five categories, governance and planning, resources, services, cooperation and collaboration, and communications. So we've broken them out in those five very broad areas and there's a lot of specific questions for each of them. Some of the questions as well are um, you are compared to peer libraries, libraries that are similar in size to your library. We use the uh, legal service area of your library and other libraries in the state to decide who's the same size as you, and then certain guidelines and questions, we compare you to those libraries so you can see how you're doing in relation to other libraries in the towns of your same size. Now, some of these peers, hopefully most of these peers are Nebraska libraries, but for some of our communities, there's not enough similar size communities in Nebraska. So we have actually pulled in data from Iowa this year. And I believe that's the only one we've done this year is brought in some Iowa numbers. Previously, we've had to pull from other states around us. So for some of you, you may see um, libraries that are your peers that are both uh, Nebraska libraries and Iowa libraries. Just so you have, we have a good, can do the math and the algorithm can actually make, you know, mean something. <laughs> we had too few of them that wouldn't mean anything. It would be really compared. We do have a preview application on the website that you can look at ahead of time before you even go into your library's live application in case you want to see what it looks like first. And this just shows you what the application looks like and then all the questions. This isn't live. These, there's, you can't actually click on anything. It's just so you can see ahead of time what it will be and what questions you might want to be prepared to answer. All right. So the application itself, once you've um, once it goes live on July 1st, um, you'll it'll, it'll go live July 1st on Sunday, and then I'll send an email out to you, Asha, officially inviting everyone to apply. You can you then click on the accreditation application link that is given to you. You can see right now it says it will begin July 1st, so right now um, it's not there to be used. And the first thing you have to do is click all of these 12 criteria before you can even get into the form. It won't let you even start until you click all 12. And then notice once you hit the last one, poof, it pops up with that you can now apply for accreditation. And then it will ask you for a user ID and password. This is the Bibliostat username and password. It's the same one that you've used, that you actually used when you logged into Bibliostat to submit your uh, public library survey. Now I already logged into one over here as a demo. So this is Norfolk's Public Library, who is up for accreditation this year. So this is their application at the moment. And I'm just going to quickly go through the basics of what's here in the application. Right off the bat, we have um, basic instructions about it. And you can see it does tell you that things that are automatically carried through from the public library survey data is automatically marked with you with either a green check or a red X, depending on if you do or don't meet that guidelines, those guidelines. If we scroll down here, we can see the first one. Well, this is us when we check that off. Um, here, the very last one's here. Um, and this is good for theirs. They have an active library friends group? No, but they do have a library foundation. Yes. So these are already pre-checked. This is not anything you can uncheck or do anything with. This is actually Norfolk's live form right now we're using as a demo. And it does tell you that this is based on information that you supplied in the supplemental survey. So those just automatically checked for you. So to start with, all libraries have all of those things pre-filled for them. And all the other questions, you just you then have to tell us all these other things that we know everything else you do beyond was in the public library survey. We do have a link here for those questions that are related to being 
uh, compared to your peers. So you can see who your peer libraries are. And here is Norfolk's. They've got some, they did have a mixture of Iowa, mostly Iowa, and uh, the Brentwood Nebraska Library. So for them, they did, we did have to reach outside of the state to get some peers for them to be compared to. You'll notice here, as I've been scrolling up and down the page, this little box here has been floating along here. This will keep track of your points, how many points you've earned so you can see where you're going, uh, how you're doing as you check on something. So I'm just gonna click here that they've actually got their plan. You can see it goes from 82 to 92 when I checked that they do have an up-to-date community needs response plan submitted to us at the commission. And you can see here, it tells you how many points that's worth right after it, 10 points. So I uncheck it, it goes back down to 82, check it, 92. So as you're going through the form, you'll see, and it's great, this floats along here. Our computer team did a great job with this application form, I think, and you can um, see uh, track as you're going along how your points are. Krista? Yes, Denise? One question we get a lot right here on this part of the form is, I have submitted my plan, but mm -hmm. I have not heard that it's approved. Should I check this or not? Uh, yes, and I just, this week, we just updated the application form to account for that because, uh, yes, that was a big problem last year. I had a lot of people, because what this used to actually say was, has a plan um, approved by the Library Commission? Well, the way the process works, it isn't necessarily going to be approved yet when you do this application form. You may have submitted your plan, then you go to do this, and I'm still looking at your plan. You and I may be going back and forth on working on updates to it. You may be going back and forth with one of our system directors on updates to it. And it was, it was yeah, the wording was confusing because we just need something submitted by October 1st. So I had them change the wording to say, has an up-to-date written plan submitted to the Library Commission? not approved by, because that's what it used to say. So we've kind of, that's one tweak that we've changed in the application form that hopefully will help answer that confusion. Um, the plan must have been written or revised in the last three years. And if it's not already approved, this is where it says here, submit it to me to actually do the approving of it. So you'll so click this button, check this button box, to say that yes, I've submitted it, then I'll still be evaluating your plan and everything you put here into the application before I then approve your actual accreditation. The written or revised in the last three years is something important to note as well. If you did your last community needs response plan, previously called strategic plan, when you first rep, were last rep for accreditation three years ago, you're gonna need to do a new one updated, of course. However, if for some reason you updated it last year, and sent it to me, it's currently okay. You don't have to make a change this year just because you're up for accreditation. It has to be something from that's at less than the three years old is all that means. So most people do it on the same schedule as accreditation, but I have a sense a few here and there where they were either ahead or delayed and so it kind of got off the schedule. So hopefully this will help that, Denise, the changing of the wording of that question. So as you're going through your application here, you'll see there's all the different things that you can check. I'm not going to go through every single one of these because it's, it's a long form to do, but you can check here all the different uh, policies you might have at your library. And you can see as you check each one of these, the buttons, the total amounts goes up over at the right there. Uh, there are some places where you can enter some information here. For example, on this one, you can type in if there's other policies that we don't hadn't listed here as suggested ones, list what it is, and then check in the box. There is also throughout the whole form, you'll notice there's these question marks. If you click in here, a pop-up comes up that does have help information. And this, when you click on it after a certain question, it goes to the help about that question. But this is actually the entire help page for the entire application so you can scroll up and down through it and see all the different information we have put in here to help you answer the question. Sometimes it explains more about what the question means. Sometimes it gives you links to other things that can help you answer the question. So it's going to vary um, from question to question what kind of information we've included there to try and help you. So I highly recommend checking that if you're wondering what I'm supposed to do at this particular question at this particular stage. Now going down to our resources, this is where we have some more of our uh, peer comparisons. 
So when there is something that is a peer comparison, this is also one that's automatically filled by us based on looking at libraries who are in your peer group, whether the Nebraska libraries or the ones we've had to bring in from Iowa. And what we do here is we put in what is your number, your whatever the statistic is we're looking at, the number we're looking at, the peer average and the peer median. Now, you can, in order to get the green check mark for any of these peer comparison type questions, you have to either be better than, your number has to be higher than either the average or the median, not both. So we give you both ways of being able to get that info, get that those points for that one. So it just depends on which one you're, you know, you might not be more than one, but you are more than the other, then you get the check for that one. So you can see here, and so we've got all the numbers that um, are just automatically put in here and they're doing pretty good as compared to their peers, looks good. Uh, so we're gonna check, so you can see, check more numbers here and they keep going up on the box on the right there. So this is all information, where are we at here? The resources, so income, facilities, uh, this is where we also bring in here under staff about the education level of the library director. This is the one that they need to be at a certain certification level, depending on the local service area of their library. So this will you would look at the peer the certification levels for library directors, what your population is, and see if you meet that. Uh, this is another one that we actually tweaked the wording on because we had a lot of questions about this. I'm not sure if you remember Scott and Denise. People are wanting to know. They didn't understand that it just was the minimum certification level. Um, and you could be higher than this, but this is the minimum you'd have to be as a library director. And this is what I was talking about earlier. Your staff can also go through the certification program and you can earn more points towards your accreditation if you have other staff members that are also certified. And these are all things that are, you've already submitted this information in your public library survey. So you don't have to tell us again here, as you can see, these are already just checked for the library. Then we have information about the collection itself. Uh, certain things here carry over. Certain things we don't know because we just don't ask them on the survey, so you have to tell us. Does the collection reflect your mission goals of the library? Do you use online websites to provide information? Uh, certain things, and now here's one finally, I hadn't seen this, uh, that they did not meet the, uh, more, did not go over the peer average or median for their collection size um, per capita. So that's, they're pretty close really close <laughs> but something that they could work on and get five more points if they wanted to but you can see here even if it's already checked it's not something that you can change yourself now uh, then we have services what kind of services you provide you can see things here so when you start off with this application form the key is you see certain things are automatically checked for you and that's great but you do have to go into the form and check other boxes so that you can tell us all the other things you're doing there's um with just doing your public library survey information, you're not gonna reach any sort of accreditation level. You're gonna to have to go in here and tell us other things that you do um, in order to get those numbers up. So I'm just randomly checking these things. I don't know if Norfolk does this, these things or not, uh, just so you can see all the, you know, the different things that you can um, add. And when you're done, you've got your total point set at the bottom here. The information for your, your director, who's usually the one who's submitting this automatically here. And then you can either, if you're done completely with this application, as far as you're concerned, all your questions, you've answered everything, you submit it. Otherwise, you can save and resume later. So if you're not sure about some of the answers, if you need to check some numbers to find out what you're doing, you can save and then it will save all of the check marks you've already done, the ones that you've added. And you, when you log in the next time, it'll It'll pick up and have all of those already ready for you and then you can add more. Now I'm not going to submit Norfolk's now because like I said the process isn't open yet and I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. I'm going to scroll back up to the top here. So any other questions? Chris, yes Denise. This is Denise. Yeah. Um, a lot of times libraries get to the end and they're not really at the level that they would like mm -hmm. and I, I would suggest they look at the communications area because there are a lot of things that can be done there in in a fairly short order, like a public bulletin board. That's not mm -hmm. a hard thing to do. And it gives you a few more points. Um, putting up your, posting your mission statement on your web page. If you don't already have that, it's a good thing to do. And heck, it's worth four points. Yeah. So, so I think that yeah. communications area offers 
a number of points that could be, if you're not checking pretty much each one of those, be sure and look at it because it's something that, that could help with the points that you need. Absolutely, yeah. And and they're very easy, like you said, easy things to, to initiate and do. Um, and some of these things also are, we're pretty, I don't know if lenient on, open on like reports regularly, usually monthly to the village board. It doesn't have to be monthly. So I've had some people say this, well, we don't do it every month. We only, they only call us up to the board every three months or something. And I'm like, whatever fits your libraries and your communities is fine. Uh, we're not gonna tell you, you have to report monthly because that's not up to us. It's up to you and your your community to decide how often you'll, you'll report. So some of these things, you know, think about them and ask. Um, if you're not sure, does this count or not? Check the questions, check the help guides here, or if that doesn't help, call me, call Denise, Scott, Eric, any of our system directors and ask, does this count, does this count? And we'll help you out with it. Uh, also, what will happen is once this is submitted to me, I'm gonna take what you've submitted, we've done the final submission and your community needs response plan and look through them together. And I'm gonna compare, because I've actually had this happen too, which, you know, maybe just you missed it, where something is mentioned in the plan, the community needs response plan, and then for whatever reason, the, the corresponding question was not checked off in the survey. So I will reach out to you and say, hey, did you forget this? Or is there something I should know about why this says it in the plan, but doesn't have it in here? So that's something that I will go back and forth with you on. And you might get more points then when you realize you haven't done it. Also, for some of these public survey, public library survey questions that are automatically fed into here, this is information from last year's survey. These are submitted the year before. That's when we get the, the information from. And that's what you know, that we have to use. Situations may change, have changed from when you did your public library survey to the time when you're doing your accreditation. I mean, this accreditation, you have until October to submit this, and your survey was done last year, you know, whenever you did it. If some situation has changed and your statistics are actually different now, and you think that this red check, red X should be a green check mark, contact us and we can look at that and change that as well from behind the scenes. We do have the power, because this is our system, to go into your survey. And if, for example, you have actually done more, your attendance in this case per capita has increased because you really pushed for it, and it is now more than the average or median, you can let us know, we can update your numbers, and that then can become a green check and you get that five points. We have done that for libraries on specific things. You just need to you know provide us with the info about that. So there is that delay, it's just the way it works of when the survey is submitted, when all of that is, is um, compiled and available to us to use, then putting it into here, situations can change and that's okay, that's acceptable, just let us know. So you might get more points um, for that as well and bump yourself either up to minimum is 175, but if you're really just almost at 200, let us know and we'll figure it, you know, and you, but you say, but, but I did this, let us know. So any questions, comments, thoughts about the form? Now, as I said, I wasn't gonna show every single question here, just showing you how it works and what's in there that uh, the basis of what you need to know. You can look at the preview form and see all the questions that you want to right now. And it's just gonna be on Sunday when you'll be able to get into your own library form. Any questions, type them into the question section out there. Let me know what you wanna know about the process. We haven't gotten any questions yet, but I'd like to answer any. Um, or Scott uh, or Denise, if there's anything that you think we should be mentioning or any other questions that you have about the process this year? Well, I'll just, just reiterate that um, this does not have to be a process that you, the director, are, are flying solo with. Oh, no. Uh, you know, Krista has mentioned, call your system directors, call Krista. You know, there's lots of people who want to help you get through this process and want to help you succeed. Um, I know sometimes when it ha when people have these type of things, sometimes it feels kind of like a, 
this is so much for one person to do, but there's yeah. lots of people who could help. Uh, and even outside of your board, you know, there are libraries I support where the person who is really working on the community needs response plan wasn't a board member, wasn't the director, but someone who, who was interested in helping and has strength to that. Um, so look outside the usual people in your community and you might find people who can help you with, especially the plan uh, requirement. Um, but yeah, to reiterate what Krista said earlier, you know, call the, your system directors, call Krista, know us and you'll get through this. Yeah, and also, as you just briefly mentioned there too, on your own side, don't, as the library director, from your side, go it alone. Talk to your staff, talk to your board. They can help you with some of the answers to some of these things uh, to figure out what you're doing. When you're talking about the community needs response plan, uh, that, let's see if I can get back to you. There's surveys to be done. There's looking at the community. That's something that you can use other people to um, get this information. You don't have to do it all on your own. We've had some directors I know have just done it all by themselves and just didn't let their staff know that it was happening and got very, you know, bowed down with it and it was very daunting. You don't have to. All of these things for writing this plan, all of this information that we have, have other people help you gather it, have other people help you do these worksheets and maybe assign someone to collect all the community profile information, assign someone else to, to do some focus groups, you know, get other people to help you out with it. You don't have to, to go it alone with any of this. Uh, something else that I didn't show here that I wanted to hear under as, I, as the board certification, library and certification, you can see your status. You can also see that and the for your library as well. So what is your current accreditation status here? So if you're not sure where you're at or when you're, you expire, we've got that here. Uh, default, defaults to being arranged by city, but then you can see. So here is Ainsworth. They're due up this year and they're at gold level at the moment. And this is the one, if you click on the library's name, it doesn't tell you anything about their accreditation. It just links to that library's particular website. The board one links to specifics about the board's certification. There's something else you will notice here. I'll mention here briefly provisional. This is something that was done the last round of libraries that were were accredited in the previous version, but there was still something they needed to fix and tweak. We're gradually phasing that out. Um, there's not going to be the well, we'll let you have your, we're accredit you, but we're gonna, you need to still finish this thing. It's either gonna mean you do it or you don't. Um, in this case, it's it, it's it was more confusing than helpful to have that as a feature there. So don't worry about, don't worry about that. Uh, as I said, the form goes live on Sunday. So you can start filling that out. You can do your community's response plan anytime you want to, send it to me. Both the plan and the form are due to be submitted to us by October 1st. The application form needs to be done. The plan can still be in a work in progress state at that point, but we have to have something. Between October 1st and December 31st, there will be back and forth between me and you and potentially your system directors if they're gonna help you out with some of this, if there is anything that does need to be worked on. And then by December 31st, that's when we will, I will notify everyone of whether you've, at the very latest, if you've been uh, reaccredited or not. It is actually an ongoing process. As soon as I have a form and a plan from you, I will look at it and start doing it. So from whenever you submit things, this will be throughout the whole summer and fall, I will gradually be letting people know if they've accredited or not. But December 31st is the absolute deadline for having all of these things done. That will also be the new uh, uh, renewal deadline for accreditation. Previously, it was September 30th, but this whole due in October, but we're still working on it in a couple of months got confusing as well. So gradually everyone's renewal date for library accreditation will be, you are accredited through December 31st, because if you submit things by October 1st, people were also confused that, well, my accreditation expired on September 30th though, but you're not gonna let me know until December 31st. Does that mean I'm not accredited for a couple of months? That was another confusing thing. No, that doesn't mean that. So we're gonna be gradually, everyone will be renewing at the end of the year. And whatever year you come up for renewal, that's when we've got that little time there, a little kind of transitional time to see if you're re-accredited or not. All right, so we're a little after 11 o'clock, but that's okay. We started a little after 10 at the beginning as well. 
anybody have any last minute desperate questions you need to ask of me or Scott or Denise before we do wrap up for today? Type it into your questions section. If you have a microphone, let me know. We can unmute you. Um, while we're waiting for that, any last words of wisdom from you, Denise or Scott? Um, <laughs> no, yeah, I think I've, I've already said, or you've already said, or Denise has already said. Um, uh, it, yeah, just start early is to repeat what Denise said mm -hmm. if you've got the option. Yeah. Denise? And don't hesitate to call. Absolutely, yes. We're here to help. Yeah. All right, I think we'll wrap it up then for today. That was a quick overview of, of what's going on with accreditation this year. Do look for the email that'll be coming to you Sunday or next week about being open, but uh, uh, the process being started, starting up, and uh, good luck with your accreditation for the upcoming year. All right, that will wrap it up for this week's Encompass Live. The show has been, is being recorded as we speak and it will be available at some point later this afternoon as long as everything cooperates with me. Uh, Encompass Live, I'm gonna show you our website here right now. We do have under education and training on our Library Commission website is Encompass Live webcasts. And this is where we have our upcoming shows and right underneath them, is right under these our upcoming sessions is our archives so this is where today's archive will be if you click there it brings the most recent one is at the top of the page this is where today's will be it will have a link to the recording a link out to all the accreditation pages and you'll have access to that everyone who attended live today and who record who registered for today's show will get an email from me letting you know that it's available also we post it out to our twitter facebook mailing lists all the usual places uh, while we're here, I'll show you to our archives. We do have a search feature in our archives now. Uh, this year, 2018, is the 10th year of Encompass Live, so we have a lot of archives. <laughs> so we've got a search feature now that you can search through all of our shows or just the most recent 12 months if you want to just find recent information. So you can search here on any topic you want to. Uh, it'll search for the topic of the show, the, the title of the show, the description, the names of the people who presented, anything you want to, and see if there's something in our archives. Now, do keep in mind this is 10 years worth of archives you'll see everything has a date here and if we scroll down it even has when it's got the older ones the year as well so you will find information in our archives that is old uh, expired outdated potentially but we are librarians so we archive and keep things for historical purposes so this will always always be here but just keep an eye you know note what date it is of something that you're looking at to make sure that you know that all well, this information is from eight years ago so that's why i can't find the up you know it's, it doesn't seem correct um, but we will always keep these all here our most also our so so that is for our archives this is our upcoming shows uh, I'll hope, um, we also are on Facebook and come to the Facebook page, which I've got over here where we post updates. Um, here's a reminder logging in about today's show, uh, posts about when our recordings are available, previous shows we've done. So if you are a big Facebook user, please do give us a like over on Facebook and you'll be notified there of when we are uh, doing new things on the show. So that's for today that's for today so I hope you join us next week and I want to make a point here to let you, you know let you guys know next week's show is collection development made easier with Ingram and this is one that actually Denise was uh, the initiated putting having this on this is something that libraries have been asking her a lot about is how do I know what to buy I have no clue what to do for collection development in my library and uh, Kevin Davenport, who is from Ingram Library Services, has helped libraries do that. And he's got some great services that they offer and some tips and tricks on how to do that. So definitely sign up for next week's show. Note, next week, because of the 4th of July holiday, 4th of July happens to fall on a Wednesday this year. We are closed, of course, for the holiday. So it is actually being held on Tuesday, not Wednesday. July 3rd is Tuesday. So keep that in mind this will be Tuesday next week not Wednesday because we won't be here and I hopefully with all the notices and read and care people will remember that <laughs> uh, however if you do it confused and don't remember eh, we record everything so 
you'll be able to watch the recording later. So do sign up for that one and any of our other upcoming shows that we have here. Other than that, thank you very much for attending, and we'll see you next time on Encompass Live. Bye-bye.